Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with Jazby's 10 box post route football mixer. It's a random team break. Everyone gets a team, a random team in the NFL. We've sold 32 spots, 32 teams, no vet common ship. And uh, we've got all of this here too. By the way, this hit parade stacked football box. Um, inside, it's here, I'll show you the box right here. Inside that box is another box. Could be a hobby box, a choice box, a something box. It's gonna be some sort of football box. And I'll open that too, and then we'll break that as, as usual, and it'll go to the respective teams, blah, 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 blah. Very big thank you to all of these folks here. Some of you uh, bought spots straight up, which I appreciate. Some of you won spots, which is great too. Congrats again on that. There's all 32 teams right here. Let's roll it. Let's randomize it. Two and a six, eight times for each list for names and teams. One. And eighth and final time. After eight times, we've got Daniel down to Joey. And then two and a six, eight times for the NFL teams. Trades are allowed. Trade at your own risk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And eighth and final time. After eight, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars down to the Dallas Cowboys. All right, Daniel with the Jags, Richard with the Buccaneers, Daniel with the Jets, David with the Colts, Rodney with the Dolphins, Anthony with the Packers, Nick with the Bengals, Arturo with the Bills, Joey with the Panthers, Chris with the Chiefs, Chris Erickson, Chris with a C, Chris with a K, Chris with a K, Falcons, Ryan, Patriots, Kurt, my Raiders, Chris with the Bears, Joey with the Chargers, Dario with the Giants, Rick with the Lions, Kevin with the Rams, Joey with the Browns and the Texans. He won in two different blaster breaks there. Daniel, last spot mojo, Baltimore Ravens. Joey with the Broncos, Kurt with the Cardinals, Colton with the Washington football team, TJ with the Titans with the spot that he won. Jeremy with the Steelers, Daniel with the Vikings, uh, and the Saints, JC with the Niners, Corey with the Seahawks, Chris with the Eagles, and Joey with the Dallas Cowboys. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get all this on one screen. I know that the font is a little small, so if you need to see your team again, let me know. If you want to trade, now is the time to let me know. And since this is the 10-box post-route football mixer, let's take a look at a post-route run by Jalen Ragor right here. In this video, this, this guy first down training, shout out to him. In this video, he breaks down a post route by Jalen Ragor. We talk about how your pad level sells the route and your acceleration out of the break. Let's take a look at a post route. Mm. Oh, that guy got all turned around, twisted. Good one-handed grab right there too. Mm. There you go. See, we got the spotlight on these guys right here. There you go. That, 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 that's how you sell it, folks. That defender, that defender got all twisted. He's thinking, man, he's, he's, that's a go route for him right up along the sideline. So he's selling that go route, then bang, post. It's a good move. It's a good move. No audio here, but I'm sure it's a good breakdown by first down training, which you can look up if you want to. Look at that. He's even got his shoulders turned as he's, he's running that kind of out route, I guess, instead of I don't know, he, he, some go route, whatever you call those routes. But there he is, and then all of a sudden, gone. And then he's, he's and then that step, that's enough right there, boys and girls. TD, probably a good pass by the, by the quarterback as well. Good one-handed grab right there at the very end. There it is, boop, right there. There you have it, post route. Trades, none, all right. TWC, trade window closed. Let's print. Let's rip. There you go, Oliver. No worries, man. That was a nice hit. I think at the very end, too. I don't think I called your number. All break until then. Okay, so that's printing out. What do we have in here? We've got 2018 stuff, a few tw three or four 2019 boxes, a couple 2020 boxes. 
One 2016 box. That's the Elite. I think we're going to start with that. All right. So there you go, everybody. The final printout. Thanks for getting into this, folks. This, this break actually should not take too long. It's a pretty short break, I think. That Donruss football, those cello packs might, might be the longest thing in this break. All right, so this is 2016. So think back to your 2016 draft class. And this is where the all sides of the box are sealed now. Not this one. Yeah, the opening is right here, but the pack is in the middle right here. So I kind of have to hulk my way into this and smash this up here and carefully extract the pack like a surgeon and see what's inside here. There we go. That's pretty difficult. And even for a pro. All right. And we got Eli Apple, who I think on this, we'll look this up. I think on the checklist, he was a, was it? Oh no, it's actually right in front of my face. I just looked at the college helmet. It's been a long week, folks. New York football giants, the apple of my eye, Dario. Jordan Howard and Joe Montana. Shoebox to, to contain all that. What's the next year after that? 2018 limited? I kind of want to save that to the end. Well, let's just get this Donruss out of the way. This, this huge box of Donruss fat packs. This is a 20, 2020 edition, so current draft class. This might be the longest box. Everything should be relatively quick after that. All right, well, while I'm opening packs, give me your thoughts. Broncos, Falcons. Who does everyone have? Broncos at Falcons. Falcons minus four. You can give me your thoughts against the spread or straight up. Where's, where's my my football pool? Who did I pick in our in our weekly football pool? I took the Broncos. the The pool is uh, the pool that we do every week is uh, is just straight up. Broncos at Falcons. Right. Grex likes the Falcons minus four. Yeah, I'm kind of regretting my pool pick right here now, now that I think about it. What about Seahawks? This is a fun matchup. Both are leading their respective division. Seahawks at Buffalo. Seattle Road faves, Seattle minus three. In my straight up pool, I took the Seahawks. I don't know, but the short home dog. Maybe I would take the Bills. Hmm. I'll have my picks posted in the break schedule. David B likes the Falcons, especially at home. And David B likes the Seahawks, as do I. But maybe Bills plus the three? Could be interesting. I should have... Where are my... I think I, I made some picks yesterday that I need to look up, and I can tell you... Everyone thinks the Falcons are going to win... 
and they lose. So, <laughs> right. I don't know. I'm always a little wary of taking, especially with the way their season has gone. Taking Falcons as a fave. So I kind of do a little my own little power rankings that I that I kind of goof around with. And then I make then I make some picks. And I actually have a play on Seattle minus three. And I've got I got Denver at plus three and a half. I wish I had them at plus four now. Although I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I, Maybe from three to three and a half. Keyshawn Vaughn. Remember, only veteran commons don't ship, but all the rated rookies will ship. Inserts will ship. Short, you know, everything that, that's a parallel. These blue borders will ship. Clyde Edwards Elaire will be pulled aside earlier because he's he's kind of good. You kind of like Bills plus three. Yeah, the short home dogs actually are kind of interesting. It's weird. Seattle going going east to west to east could get a little tricky. It's an early game. I think the I think Seattle has the Rams next week, so so maybe they're looking ahead to the Rams and and not 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 really thinking about the Bills. Bills need to bounce back a little bit. Seattle can't stop the pass. I know a lot of lot of fantasy guys saying that Stephon Diggs is gonna is gonna go off. So I don't know. Well, for what it's worth, I've got Seattle minus three, but I'm not feeling good about it. <laughs> so. We'll see how that happens. I've got Denver plus three and a half. That's another pick of mine. Denver plus three and a half at Atlanta. We kind of discussed that. I don't know. Atlanta's a favorite might not be. Maybe you want Atlanta as a dog. I feel like you saw what you saw what Denver did to these guys, right? To the Chargers in the fourth quarter. So in So they've got that ability. You know what? In my offshore sports book, Grex, my Detroit was off, which was annoying. Thought there was going to be a pick there for me, but no. Set aside of Tom Brady. By the way, I'm pretty sure the uh, the shipping department has standing orders to uh, to ship Tom Brady's and uh, Patrick Mahomes's. So in case we miss some, it'll be on its way. That Chase Winovich was flipped around, so maybe that's a variation. We'll set that aside just in case. There's Blue Brady right there, Chase Young. He's pretty good. What would my, if you, plus four, now the, the power rankings that I kind of create, I just take all sorts of numbers, rank teams by 32 to 1, and then you average out, average them out, and then, um, and then you, then you kind of minus one person's points to so another person's points, and then, and you get that. So, according to that, I think Minnesota, Minnesota should be minus two and a half, I think. So maybe. So if you're getting points with the Niner, with the Vikings, that could be interesting. Yeah, Houston, Jacksonville. I you, you got to think Houston's the easy, the relatively easy pick there. But according to my power rankings, it's, it's the line should be right around minus six point eight, 
my side. I don't know why the line's like that. So maybe it's just my rankings are being goofy. Or it's not accounting for Luton, that's for sure. So maybe it should be more. Maybe, you know, how many points is Minshew worth? I mean, Minshew wasn't playing really well leading up to his the bye and the fractured thumb and all that. But maybe it was the thumb that was that led to his ineffectiveness. But I think ESPN uses like either Caesar's Palace lines or William Hill lines. I'm going off my offshore book bet online. The other the other pick I had was yeah Baltimore minus one is interesting, right? Guess what? I got Indianapolis plus two and a half. So I kind of like that the line has moved that way. I bet these early earlier in the week, and I try to be, I try like to beat the line. Oh, that's Joe Mixon, not Joe Burrow. So, the thing is, I think Philip Rivers is kind of getting into a little bit of a groove. And Indianapolis has a really good defense. Baltimore's defense isn't isn't what, you know, casuals may think it is anymore. You know, and and uh Baltimore relies so heavily on on the run and and, and taking the lead. Now, if the Ravens take the lead, their running game is so good that they can just they can just grind you, grind you, grind your possessions to an all time low. You know, you're not getting the ball back anytime soon. But that Indianapolis offense is decent, and that defense is is legit. So we'll see how that works out. All right, so we got that Donruss out of the way. Those retail packs, nothing too crazy in there. Uh, what else should we do? We got. I want to save the mosaics kind of towards the end. Maybe this prism, uh, prism mega box right here from 2019. Another pick I have. I have Kansas City minus ten and a half. I don't know what the line is right now, but I got Kansas City minus ten and a half. Yeah, I think they're they're a pick em almost everywhere. I think. I got the Raiders at, and I picked the Raiders too at minus uh, one twelve. Which yeah, which is just that even on a money line, that's pretty much fifty fifty. I think Carolina's going to be a lot better with with Christian McCaffrey back in that lineup, but I think at home in Kansas City might have a limited number of fans there. I think there's too much firepower from Kansas City. I guess the Teddy Bridgewater backdoor cover in like the fourth quarter could be the concern, but I think I think Kansas City should cruise. They'll probably win by like what two couple touchdowns, fourteen points by the time all said and done. Yeah, and I, well, and I'm a Raiders fan, so take that for what you will. This is all for entertainment purposes anyway. But I like the Raiders. They play pretty well on the road. The team's mostly mostly healthy. We saw what happened with uh, with the Chargers blowing that lead in the fourth quarter. So there's a bit of that going on. So Justin Herbert's no slouch. Raiders defense, and I'm a Raiders fan. Raiders defense not very good. So we might see a higher scoring game, I think. There's DK Metcalf, rookie card for the Seahawks. That'll go to Corey. And Darius Slayton, he's pretty solid. Green Pulsar, rookie autograph for the New York Football Giants. Dario with that one. I think I just saw on the ticker, the ESPN ticker, that Golden Tate due to some disciplinary thing is out this week 
So maybe this guy's stock rises a little bit this week. And there's a Kyler Murray rookie card right here too for Kurt, who got the Cardinals, won that spot in a blaster break. All right, so a couple nice cards out of this mega box. Uh, playoffs. Playoffs? We'll stay in that 2019 mode right there. So, yeah, the, 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 I, I, last week I had a bunch of picks. I had I, My power rankings told me to pick nine games. And I only went four and five. That was not good. So, but this week I've got Seattle minus three, Denver plus three and a half, Entertainment purposes only. Indianapolis plus two and a half. KC minus ten and a half. And uh, the Raiders money line minus twelve and a half. But yeah, if if they can, if the if my Raiders can figure out how to use rugs, which they're kind of figuring out. I think he missed a couple weeks, so I think that kind of held his development back. He had that little hamstring issue, but but yeah, once him and Derek Carr kind of kind of get get their timing together, I think that could be huge. I mean, he's already made a huge difference for, difference for the Raiders. You know, really stretches the field and then lets guys like Darren Waller and Renfro, you know, run around underneath. Josh Jacobs can can control the game with the run. Um, you know, Devontae Booker is on the Raiders. He's RB2, and he's actually been, you know, whenever Josh Jacobs needs a rest, Devontae Booker's been able to eat up some yards. So, yeah, Aguilar actually has shown some decent hands. So one, once, once like Brian Edwards comes back, I don't know if he's back this week, but once Brian Edwards comes back, he's kind of a big target, which is different from the speedy rugs. So they've got some, they've got some guys. You know, it's, they still, it still has to kind of patch together, but they've got some guys. That defense is still a problem for my Raiders. I, I think the Raiders are still a couple of years away from doing anything playoff wise, but. But I like the direction the the team is going. It's a lot. The, the team's a lot more f fun to watch too. Well, everyone thought that Mariota was going to be there to to take Derek Carr's job, but I just I don't think that. I mean, maybe he was there for a little bit of giving Derek Carr a bit of a push, but no, I, I don't think Derek Carr is going anywhere. But there's rookie stallions Kyler Murray, but. I think Derek Carr is kind of playing for his next contract, you know. So if he does well in the next three or four years of his deal, I think it's three or four years, that goes to Kurt and the Cardinals, then that might determine whether he gets another contract with the Raiders or not. Stargazing Patrick Mahomes, Dwayne Haskins. Grex is a uh, Jets fan. I'm sorry. We we have a regular customer here. You may have seen his name around, Adam Cuffman, who's a who's a big Jets fan as well. And I think a lot of times when we talk Jets, it's just, we're just kind of shaking our heads, being like, "There's DeAndre Baker." Just shaking your heads, being like, "There were some pieces on that team." Gase has to go, right? I think Gase goes. You know. That's another New York football giant, by the way, for Dario. There's DK Metcalf, another one for Seattle. Maybe you... Uh... But I think the Jets have accumulated a lot of, uh, a lot of picks, no? Because they've been trading away guys in the offseason and during the season. They must have gathered up some picks. There's TJ Hawkinson turning pro. Two-color patch for the Lions. That's for Rick Hoffman. So you got to get rid of because you don't want him making picks. He's he's got to get he's got to get booted in the off season, right? <laughs> Make them go zero and sixteen, then get a new coach. Maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe shake up the front office a little bit. Get some get some different guys in there, and then take your bunch of draft picks and just rebuild that team because they've deconstructed the team already. Why not reconstruct the team? Right, exactly, David. 
Yeah, they're going to keep him so they, they can they can get the number one pick. Well, yes, then the drafting is the is, is the actual draft itself now becomes the issue. But but they've got a chance because to, to really turn it around a lot more quickly if they can get this upcoming draft done right. You know, maybe you even trade, if you get the number one pick, maybe you even trade Sam Darnold. There's Devin White. Nice rookie auto for the Buccaneers. That's for Richard. Yeah, exactly, Jeremy S. Maybe you, maybe you move. You know, maybe you move Sam Darnold. Move him for a draft pick. Just keep keep stockpiling. Yeah. You know, or or maybe Darnold just becomes a backup or something like that, a young backup. But we've got two limited boxes here. Let's get plates and patches going first, actually. But I just keep stockpiling draft. But then the challenge, like you were saying, Grex, is <laughs> the challenge is then what do you do with the picks? And hopefully they can hit on some picks. All right, plates and patches because there's a plate and a box. Oh, this one's autographed. Look at that. Bob Lilly. No, J Billy Joe. Dupree. Different cowboy. From Legacy. That'll be for the Dallas Cowboys, Joey Fisher. Joey. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. We got Carry On My Wayward Son, 3 out of 99. Jared Goff, 31 out of 35. Rams. And it's the return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. 26 out of 50. Dual Relic Marlon Mac for the Blue Horseshoes going to David Baker. And speaking of the Jets, there's old Mark Gass now. 40 out of 50. There you go. You can use someone like him again. All right, we got 2019 limited. What, is, what, what, what year is this? 2018 limited right here. So let's do the older one first. Speaking of. I think Miami is in a similar situation as the Jets. I feel like they stockpiled a bunch of picks. So that could be that could be a big thing too. Give two of some weapons. I think there's two, yeah, base cards on the bottom of each of these. And then the hits. All right, behind Lamar Miller is Larry Fitzgerald and behind Larry Fitzgerald is Deshaun Hamilton 38 out of 299 three color patch and auto for the Broncos that'll be for Joey Fisher yeah what are the quarterbacks that may see that may see a different you know that may seem like a bust on their current teams but may 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 do well on a different team you know yeah maybe it's, Greg's is saying maybe if Sam Darnold you know, it goes to like Pittsburgh or something like that, or Indy. You know, another autograph. It's Andre Reed, Ring of Honor, three out of twenty. Buffalo, Arturo with the Buffalo Bills. Andre Reed's pretty good. Three out of twenty. T.Y. Hilton, Julio Jones to 49, reveals Mason Rudolph, 12 out of 50. Yeah, Sam Darnold in Pittsburgh. Are people talking Dwayne Haskins in Pittsburgh? I feel like that could be somewhat interesting. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, I was in last week's pool, NFL pool that we do. I uh, I picked the Giants for Monday night, just as a as a wacky oppo pick. I think sometimes there's like 40, 50 people in this pool, so so sometimes you have you can't go chalk the entire time. So that was my oppo pick, and I thought I had it. The first three quarters, this guy. I thought he was gonna do it, and I thought they were just gonna they were just gonna catch catch the Buccaneers sleeping, and then bam, win that and win me some money. But no, the Daniel Jones turnovers were brutal, brutal. Call me crazy, but he but Greg thinks Jameis is still a good quarterback. That I wonder about too. I mean, usually, if you if you said that that a uh, that a uh, that a quarterback threw thirty interceptions in a season, there's no way he gets the opportunity, right? No way he gets even a chance to throw thirty touchdowns, right? I mean, that's kind of oddly special. Maybe if he marinates behind Drew Brees, there's Mike Weber. Maybe if he marinates behind Drew Brees in in, in New Orleans, that could be a huge boost to his career. You know, Bridgewater. Bridgewater sat behind Breeze for a season or two, raised his stock, and now he's a starter, and he's actually looking pretty good this season. You know? So I think I think Winston may still have a chance somewhere. Joe saying Haskins would be better anywhere but Washington. Washington's got a decent defense, though. Trubisky, Jeremy is saying. Maybe Trubisky, you know, change of scenery for him could be... Maybe someone could revive his career. He'd be a great backup for a while. Behind Delaney Walker is... Whoa! Kyler Murray. Two-color patch and autograph. Wow. RPA for Kurt and the Cardinals. He won that spot in a mosaic blaster break. He... I mean, he hasn't been lighting it up stats-wise this year. But he he's he he does what exactly what he needs to do to get his team in winning position. That's going to be an interesting game. Let's go back to I don't have an official pick on Arizona. What's my what's my pool pick? I think my pool did I pick? Yeah, I picked the Cardinals at home to defeat the uh, to defeat Miami. Oh, has he been good in fan? I feel like he hasn't really been, been putting up like super monster numbers, at least for a quarterback, but maybe the rushing yards help. There's Dalvin Cook, 19 out of 75. He's been amazing. And then we've got a rookie phenom throughout like Tony Pollard right here to 199. Is Tony Pollard going to get a little extra work? What's going on with Zeke? That's just a straight pick. Uh, Cardinals are minus five. Straight pick Cardinals. Let's do this blast. What is, what is this? This is uh, no huddle, maybe? Yeah, this is no huddle. So I'll, I'll do no huddle first, then blaster. There's more packs in here. Good luck, everybody. I'm not sure if I would take the Cardinals minus five, but just straight up, I feel pretty comfortable with the with the Cardinals. I don't know, two is still a wild card, right? I mean, for the hobby, I want him to do well. It's hashtag good for the hobby. I want all the rookies to do well. One of last year's rookies to do well. I want all the rookies to do well every year. But Tua, yeah, Tua's first road game. What do the Dolphins want to do? They're four and three. Do they actually want to win ball games? Do they think they they want to go to the playoffs? Maybe, or maybe they want a better draft. They want better draft picks. Is that true, Jeremy? 
Jeremy Shockley saying Larry Fitzgerald has more tackles than he has drops in his career. That kind of speaks to, uh, if he has more tackles and drops, that kind of speaks to, to quarterback play, right? Maybe the quarterbacks are turning the ball over, giving Larry Fitzgerald the chance to get tackles. All right. Good luck, folks. Now we're in 2020, and then whatever pops out of here. We got a blue Chase Young, 29 out of 75. That'll be for Washington. That'll be for Colton. We got Zach Moss. Mosaic pattern for Arturo and the Buffalo Bills. We got Darrington Evans, 11 out of 20. Nice low number there for TJ and the Titans. Not bad. Not, I'm not sure what he's he's about, but he was the Sun Belt Conference's Offensive Player of the Year. Has he been getting some work in? I don't know. There's NFL debut, Tua Tagovaiola. He'll be in the Valley of the Sun. Yeah, Zach Moss, Oliver saying... I feel like he's been getting some uh, some run, right? He might take over for Singletary. Get the job over Devin Singletary to take his job, maybe. So Zach Moss looking good. His stock going up. Kevin Bird, Titans, 4 out of 75. Another one for TJ. And there's a Tua base card for the Dolphins. That's going to be for Rodney. Gets the NFL debut, Tua, and now the base Tua. So stuff like this is obviously not a veteran common, so that will ship, by the way. Joe Burrow, of course, ships. Nice Joe Burrow. And that Mahomes will ship, too. It's Kevin Byard? Bayard? I did not know that. Joe Burrow, Cincinnati. And it'll be for Nick Stober. There's Jacob Eason, NFL debut. Yeah, I do like the rookie, the rookie uh, class in 2020. So far, so good. You know, guys got like got. Good quarterbacks. He got some a good class of receivers in the first round. One of them's going to pop and be awesome, right? At least one of them. So, you know, you got some quarterbacks playing. Justin Herbert's playing extremely well. So, I hope that they have good second in second, third, fourth years. Justin Jefferson might be the best receiver of the class. And I don't, I don't think he was a first rounder. Yeah, some solid running backs, too. Clyde edwards Lair, We haven't even talked about him. He's pretty good. There's Larry Johnson, speaking of the Chiefs. That goes to Chris Baruki. Exactly, Matthew Shearer. How, how composed. Yeah, Ma Justin Herbert looks like, almost looks like he's like prime Phillip Rivers back there. Just His, his, his defense has, has let Justin Herbert down. He could have a few more wins under his belt. Two or three more wins. That's for the Bolts. That's going to be for Joey Fisher. Hopefully not this weekend, though. Not tomorrow against my Raiders. 
All right, so Jeremy got back to us with the actual numbers. Larry Fitz apparently has tw 39 tackles to 29 drops. Wow. Yeah, Larry Fitzgerald's pretty good. I'm seeing him a little more commercials these days. Have you seen that? Rocket Mortgage commercial, IBM, IBM Watson commercials. This is the Blaster edition of Mosaic, same year. Oh, you got Derek Carr in fantasy? I got a... Going on. Anyone know what the update with Trent Brown? Trent Brown, we kind of a scary situation for him last year. I think last week he was getting an IV, just his uh, usual pregame IV or something like that, and there there was a little uh, air bubble, which was not good. So he had to, he had to kind of deal with that, but hopefully he he's back. He's a big part of that offensive line. If I can only pick one rookie besides Ruggs, who would it take? Yeah, air, yeah, that's the understatement of the week, Oliver. <laughs> air bubbles and IVs are bad. So that's what happened to him last week. So that's why he didn't play. Um, so hopefully, he's he A, he's okay, and B, hopefully he's okay to play. That should be a fun game, I think. Raiders, Chargers, always, always, get, always fun. Divisional battle. Um, if I pick one... If I took my Raiders bias aside and did not take Ruggs as the one wide receiver, who would it be? Matthew Shears is Jerry Judy. I Justin Jefferson. Look at Justin Jefferson's numbers. Another Joe Burrow for Cincinnati. Nick Stober. I think I might take Justin Jefferson on the Vikings. I don't know. I don't think we'll know what C.D. Lamb can do. I mean, for the short time him and D Dak were together, you know, I th I think I think he looked pretty dangerous, but now we don't. Really, it's hard to evaluate C.D. Lamb season this year. All right, let's see what's in this monster here. So you can kind of see the box up on top as well. This is Hit Parade Football Stacked Box Edition. So there's a box inside here. 15 out of 50. I'm not sure. Jason did a couple boxes, breaks of this the other day. So I don't know what the situation is. Oliver says Chase Claypool. It's not even close. Wow, a lot of good rookie wide receivers this year. <laughs> Everyone else is second. Maybe some bias there from Oliver. All right, so you can see in the top camera a better angle there. Oh, this is cool. It's... 2020 Panini Contenders Draft Picks football. And that's another six autos in this mixer, ladies and gentlemen. Chance to chase this guy too, among others. Chris Peterson saying, don't sleep on Colin Johnson. Wait till, wait till, where, did, where is Colin Johnson at? Maybe I'm, I'm sleeping on him, too. He Oh, he's with the Jaguars. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and Chenault on that team, too. So he's saying Chris is like, wait until they get quarterbacks. All right. Each pack has an autograph. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We got Patrick Taylor Jr. is our first one. Uh, let me actually mark these down for the shipping team. Patrick Taylor is with the Packers. It's supposed to know it's kind of massive there, but there it is, Green Bay. Next auto.
is Colby uh, Colby Parkinson, a Stanford Cardinal. Tyler Johnson, the Bucks. Grex is saying, "Don't sleep on Tyler Johnson." Every once in a while, I pop Tyler Johnson in a DFS lineup. I feel like he's a he's a decent sneaky cheap play. Uh, for uh, for Tyler Johnson, I don't think he's super expensive in DFS, and you can kind of pop into the lineup. And every once in a while, he'll get you some decent points. Um, I can't admit I know where Colby Parkinson goes. He's a tight end for the Seahawks. The Hawks of the Sea. And that will be for Corey and Seattle. And we've got Jonathan Taylor, school colors, autograph, uh, 10 out of 23, cracked ice. I think Jonathan Taylor's a colt, a blue horseshoe. He turned, he went from a, he went turn it run from a badger into a horse. Yes, he is an Indianapolis colt. Three more autographs to go. We got Jalen Ragor. Speaking of receivers, what about him? And that contender's optic design. Yeah, I think Jonathan Taylor Thomas too. Jalen Ragor for the Fly Eagles Fly. Chris Baruki with that. For the Fly Eagles Fly. Two more autographs. Antoine Winfield Jr. I forgot where he goes. He's a safety. For Tampa Bay. Another Buccaneer, Richard Cromwell. Or our first first Buccaneer in this box. Right, and uh, Grex was talking about T. Higgins too. T. Higgins, another receiver. I mean, the the receiver class is really deep this year and it'll be nice it'll be interesting to see which you know which receiver kind of emerges over the over the next few years all right last pack everybody of this 10 box mixer we'll do a quick little recap and we've got aaron fuller house college ticket autograph the old washington husky who everyone knows is now Is now a Seattle Seahawk. Oh, this is way too many players in the NFL. All right, <laughs> Seattle Seahawks, and that's one for Corey and the Seattle, the Hawks of the Sea. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. Thanks for watching. This turned out to be a pretty fun ten box post route mixer. Look at that. That was one of the biggest hits of the break itself. These Joe Burrows, Herberts. I mean, these will, if these grade out nice, they'll go for a lot of dollar, dollar bills. Got some nice relics. Got a, I think he's a Hall of Famer, right? Andre Reed, Mark Gassinow. We got the plate right here for the Cowboys, Billy Joe Dupree, who I think is also a member of Green Day. We got a rookie, Kyler Murray, right here as well. Darius Slayton, Elaire, Eli Apple. Those college hits over there, a lot of great stuff. That was Jaspi's 10-box post-route football mixer. 
I appreciate everybody getting in. Thank you very much. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Go Raiders!